How did these two spacecraft combine to become this one spacecraft? We're talking about transposition and docking today on Vintage Space. The need to connect the command service and lunar modules on the way to the moon and then have them separate and reconnect again was of course born from the decision to use lunar orbit rendezvous as the mission mode for Apollo. Because only the smaller lunar module would actually be landing on the moon's surface, it had to have some way of connecting with the command service module with its larger consumables and fuel tanks that would be waiting for it in lunar orbit. And looking at pictures of the Saturn V rocket, we know that the two spacecraft didn't exactly leave the Earth in this lunar landing ready configuration. Instead, the command service module was packed on top of, when you're talking about a vertical rocket, the lunar module stored in an adapter section. This is the part of the Saturn V rocket that actually reached orbit. The S-4B upper stage, the lunar module packed in its adapter, the service module, and of course the command module. The S-4B stage had to stick around because this engine was the one that lit a second time to send the crew from the Earth to the Moon on what's called the Translunar Injection Burn. Only when the crew was on their way to the Moon was it time to recover the lunar module from its adapter. This was a multi-stage process. The command module pilot would first separate this spacecraft using the small thrust rockets because if he had burned the main engine he would have fried the lunar module. To bring it around and then turn around, going very slowly and carefully, traveling less than a foot a second, he would guide the command module to the lunar module's docking port, connect the two spacecraft, and then draw the lunar module out. This docked configuration was then ready to go to the moon. But what's really interesting here is the actual docking mechanism. The docking probe was a three-pronged probe sticking out the top of the command module with three latches. The tip of the probe went through a hole in the conical drogue on the lunar module, at which point it would activate a pneumatic system actuated by nitrogen gas to move the latches from the cocked into the locked position. This in turn activated a probe retract system that drew the two vehicles together. At the same time, the lunar module's tunnel ring activated 12 latches on the command module to form a tight pressure seal between the two spacecraft. The newly created tunnel between spacecraft and the lunar module were pressurized through valves, and then once everything was equalized so there would be no explosive decompression, the probe and drogue mechanism was removed and the astronauts were able to pass through between the two vehicles. The whole process was done in reverse to separate the two spacecraft, freeing up the lunar module to make its lunar landing. After leaving the moon's surface, the lunar module would rendezvous and perform the exact same docking maneuver with the command module a second time, again opening up that tunnel so the astronauts would be able to transfer back into the command module. The transposition and docking phase, that initial capture of the lunar module before getting to the moon, was a vital phase because if for any reason the crew couldn't capture the lunar module, there was no mission. There was no provision to do an EVA to transfer astronauts between the two vehicles unless there was an emergency situation. But not being able to get the lunar module out of its adopter section would not be enough of an emergency to start doing EVAs to transfer into the vehicle just to save the lunar landing portion of the mission. And this is what almost happened happened on Apollo 14. On a nominal mission, it took command module pilots just one try to dock with the lunar module. These guys were, after all, highly trained pros. But on Apollo 14, it took Stu Rusa six tries to dock with the lunar module, and it wasn't because he just wasn't good at his job. There was a problem with the latching mechanism, in that the command module would hit the lunar module's drogue and kind of bounce back, as Rusa described it. In the end, Houston had Apollo 14 perform a hard dock. He manually maneuvered the command module such that its docking mechanism was right flush against the docking ring on the lunar module. Then the crew manually retracted the docking probe, forcing the latches to engage and pull the two spacecraft together. It was a bit of a sketchy moment for NASA because no one was really sure whether or not the problem would resurface the next time the crew tried to dock the two vehicles, namely when the two moonwalking astronauts were returning from their stay on the moon's surface. But luckily, the problem did not resurface, and Apollo 14 had a very successful lunar landing mission. I've got a blog over on Popular Science that explains in more detail exactly how the docking mechanism between the command service and lunar modules worked, and what actually happened on Apollo 14's docking anomaly, so be sure to check that out if you'd like to know more. The link is below in the description. And of course, since we are talking about Apollo 14, this Sunday marks the 45th anniversary of that mission's launch, and that means I am live tweeting the entire mission. We are starting at 4.03 p.m. on Sunday, January 31st, so be sure to follow me, AST Vintage Space, so you don't miss updates on the cruise process in real time with a 45-year time delay. 
And of course, follow me on Twitter for daily vintage space content too. And with new videos going up every Friday, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.